text amendment, if we voted on that today and said yes, we'll, we'll modify, not text amendment, the solid waste management plan. If we said yes, we'll take the solid waste management plan update, but we didn't like the landfill, we could always rescind what we did. So this is step one of, I don't know how many step journey, but it's a long process. And we intend, or at least as far as Madhu Panai, and I'm sure the, uh, Mr. Underwood has done the same thing, we intend to make sure we get as, as much citizen input as possible. So we haven't made a decision. We haven't committed to a, having a landfill yet. We're gathering information. We're taking a proposal. Um, I'm sorry, Ed and Paul, but uh, the two gentlemen in the corner on the left, and please don't attack them with pitchforks. But they are the people from Caroline Recycling. They're going to be the ones who are conducting the meeting next week. And they'll be the ones that conduct meetings around the county. So we want to make sure people know what's going on. And that's it. Um, I think that took care of all of the landfill questions except one. Um, 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 no, the young lady, Elena. I can't read my own handwriting. Well, how come I can't read Smith? <laughs> Elena Smith, yeah, Western Carolina. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we review the personal property fine discussion that we were um, we had going on at last meeting. You need to make a motion to reconsider. I'd like a motion to reconsider. Okay. Is there a second to Mr. Black's motion to reconsider our vote last week? on the personal property tax uh, penalties and fees? Second. Okay. Motion is made by Mr. Black. What we are actually doing, we voted last week to not do anything. Mr. Black changed his vote from yes to no or whatever from no the to yes. no to yes. To be on the prevailing side, he then has the right to make a motion to reconsider. Motion seconded by Mr. Seeley. The chair will now entertain that motion to consider. Is there any discussion? No discussion? Well, Mr. Chairman, I have just a couple points. Since we've gone to um, a new process for assessing personal property, and most people aren't familiar with it and don't realize that, that we are actually doing assessments as they buy vehicles, I think for some period of time we do need to educate folks on what on the new process and I do think sending notices because getting a 10 percent penalty for not reporting and is there a tax penalty also Mrs. Carter on on <coughs> the payment no it's just a penalty. there's a late fee Late fee, the late fee and the penalty are all together. That's the one fee. But I think because we're doing proration, people aren't familiar with this. It is a complete change in the policy and the method by which we've done this in the past. And for those that don't know, if you buy a new car in July, you have 60 days to, re to go to the treasurer and, and the commission of the revenue and actually report the vehicle and get a, de a decal for your car if you don't, you get assessed a penalty for not doing that. And for those on the western side of the county that don't frequent Bowling Green, that probably is probably an imposition. And most people don't realize that is going on currently because we have gone from once a year report. You still report your vehicles once a year, but if you buy a new vehicle, say in July, you are outside of the reporting period and don't report again until February, you could fall into the same situation. So what we were asking for is to send a postcard to those folks with new vehicles because DMV does report to the Commissioner of the Revenue. Okay. Any other discussion? Um, Ms. Carter, I'm just out of curiosity whether how well this vote goes. Can you get me how much money that the county has made off of these fines? I mean, as far as the proration fines? Yeah. I'll repeat it. Um, I'm just kind of curious because I, I have a feeling... Okay. 
Mrs. Carter, we just want to make sure. I'm going to repeat just the fact that you said yes, you could get Mr. Uh, Black the amount of what those fines were. I'm just repeating this because we're not going to pick up your comments on the microphone, so we won't hear them later. Um, anything else you would like to, for me to repeat to the audience that's going to be watching this later to make sure they hear you? Or is that basically it? We need to understand. Can she, Ms. Carter, can you, can you, can you. Oh, you're good, Nair. Sure. Well, we're discussing motion. Right. Um, yeah. This doesn't qualify as discussion, but we're very liberal when it comes to that. Well, we do. One thing I did want to correct. <laughs> yes, ma'am. That's Bless all. Mm -hmm. We do have a late filing penalty. There is a different penalty called a late payment penalty. There's two penalties completely different from each other. But the, the late filing penalty is the one we get when we don't turn the paperwork right. in February right. 1st. The late payment penalty is applied when you have a due date, when you get right. your bill, December 5. Right. If you pay your bill on December 10th, you're going to get a late payment penalty. Okay. So okay. when I buy a car in July mm -hmm. and I don't report it for 60 days, I'm getting the late payment penalty or the late filing penalty. You're getting the late filing penalty. And now your county decal, remember, is due on that vehicle within 30 days. Right. Okay. So, so the late filing penalty that these people would have gotten that the state code says 10% or $10, right, whichever is higher. Is that correct? That's what's allowed by state code. So it says whatever's higher, that's part of it? Ten, no, no, it says 10% or $10, whichever is higher? Yes. Okay. That's the way it's always been. Right. But I'm yeah. saying I kind of know where Mr. Black is going, so if we said... 10% or $10, whichever is lower, we would have to have an ordinance change. Yes, sir. There'd have to be an ordinance change, public hearing, right. whole nine yards. Okay. Mr. Black, are you finished Ms. with Ms. Ms. Carter? Chairman, I, yeah, and I just, have a, I just have a comment. I guess my concern is... Thank you, Ms. Carter. Um, we had, you know, and I was, I was behind oh, this. We Karen, had, Wayne's got a question. So. We had published the names in the papers of people who were, you know, delinquent on their taxes. Um, for a long time had been uh, very delinquent on their taxes. A lot of the people that I'm hearing, like the Smiths here, um, these are people that are pay their taxes on time. These aren't people that haven't paid taxes in three years and four years. These are people that come and regularly pay their taxes. Um, I'm getting emails from those type of people. And my concern is that we're making money um, underhandedly, um, that the, these people truly don't know. When you get a statement in February on the back saying, hey, if you buy a new vehicle, yeah, it's there. Okay, it is there. However, like, like Elena said, how many people pay attention to that slip? Um, my concern is I agree with Mr. Seeley. Um, maybe we need to do a better job or for because we have proration now of getting that information out to the people, but that is my opinion. Thank you. Okay. Other discussion on the motion? Um, who has a question for Mrs. Carter? I do. Do you have one? Uh, my question is, is when we talk about the, uh, the penalty, uh, if a person bought a vehicle in July and didn't report it until October, they've gone beyond the 60-day period. How much would that tax be? Would it be 10% of the total six-month period or the whole 12-month period that of taxes due on that vehicle, or would it be for the three months they did not uh, file? No, sir. It would be on the total. I don't have a choice there. Okay. So the tax was $800. $800 your yeah, that penalty would be eighty dollars. Yes, sir. But of course, that would be a prorated bill. But I can't. Okay, that's my point. Is the oh. fact that would that would they owe eighty dollars or would they owe no? If it was three July, months of that eighty dollars. They owe forty dollars for six months. Yeah, that's what that's what. And we're twenty dollars for three months. That's my question. That is my my question. I think we're talking the same thing. I'm talking a prorated bill, not okay. an annual so if only, bill. Okay, so if they only right. late three months. They only, get on a penal, they only get a penalty on the three months. Right. Yes, Which sir. Which would be it's, about it's, $20 yeah. on an $800 uh, tax bill. Yes, sir. 
Uh, it's not that much difference between the $10 and the $20. I, I guess my, my, and I certainly, I certainly have empathy for Mrs. Smith and her family about the vehicle and, and not uh, having the uh, uh, decals. But that is a problem that we've had in Caroline for many, many years, is the fact that people move into the county, they do not bother to get the decals, uh, county decals. I'm not saying, Mrs. Smith, that's the way it, it's happened with you. Uh, but that happens a great deal. I can, you know, I can ride throughout, and especially outside the county, Mr. Mr. Black, uh, and I can tell you uh, probably at least five out of ten cars are not going to have county decals. Now, what the purpose is, I don't know. Uh, I don't think it's all because they bought new vehicles and didn't come in to get new decals for those vehicles. Uh, but I think that we have to, if we've talked about being fair with taxes, and if everybody has to pay taxes, then everybody has to pay taxes. And if you've got people that do not bother to, to pay the taxes for three years, we've said, okay, we're going to embarrass them and we're going to put the names in the paper and hope that that's going to require them to come out and pay. Uh, I'm sorry, but I just think that people need to pay uh, what they're due. If it was an uh, $80 bill that Mrs. Smith had to pay, for instance, then yeah, I think we may probably need to do something with that. But if we're talking about a prorating of the tax bill that's due for the number of months that they did not come in and report it, uh, no, I don't know if that's, if that's an issue. Okay. Mr. Underwood has a discussion point, and then we're going to try to round up the discussion. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Underwood? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, when we talked about proration and uh, means of identifying those folks who didn't follow the process because clearly there is a process in place that Ms. Carter and her staff sends out with your notice. Am I correct, Ms. Carter? When, when you send out your tax... Ms. Kern sends Ms. out the tax She notes. sends out the tax bill. Isn't, isn't there... Um, <coughs> There's a big yellow sheet a big that yellow was in mind. Reminds you to, to what you need to do when yes, you're filling sir. out that paperwork? Yes, sir. So you're doing your due diligence. Now, the question, from, you know, again, for me, Mr. Chairman, is, is what we voted on what we actually intended it for it to do. And apparently there's been some people who were caught in the process of maybe not reading it, but that's really not an excuse. I bought a new car. I paid the proration. I read the print. I filed it just like I was supposed to, because that was the instruction. That's what we talked about up at this board, making sure that people had a way of knowing and understanding. And I can't blame it on our staff, because they did what we asked them to do. And now we're trying to say that the staff is doing something to raise money, because we're out to get people who, that's not true. The reality of it is we set a process in place to ensure that people knew when their monies were due. So I don't think, I don't, I don't agree with saying staff was out to get money just for the sake of getting money. It was his proposal. Can't have it both ways. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Black, I'm going to let you uh, finish up the discussion on the motion that's before us. Mr. Chairman. And we're I'm really only talking about the motion to reconsider right now, right. so. We haven't even gotten to anything past that, but I know, I know there was a lot of discussion that all centers around the same thing, so you go right ahead. Um, I'd like to, can I respond to the comments? You can Mr. respond. Um, I was the one who brought proration forward, absolutely. Um, and proration was to tax people on... Thank you, Ms. Carter. To tax people on what they owned, absolutely. absolutely. Um, there's no question about that. I don't think any of us up here understood the fines that would be in place if people didn't go within 30 or 60 days. I most certainly did. Uh, did not. Okay, I had never had any intention whatsoever of saying, getting people to say, um, "Hey, you don't pay your tax, go pay Caroline County 10 percent." That was not the intention whatsoever. So it cannot be brought up or implied that that was the case. Okay, that was not the case. The proration. I believe if you buy, go out and buy a new vehicle, you should pay taxes on the new vehicle that day. Okay. Um, my concern, however, is once again, and I'm not blaming Miss Carter. Miss Carter does an excellent job. I'm saying is we have identified a flaw in the system that I consider to be a flaw in the system. We have now have an opportunity to ch fix that flaw. This is what's in front of us now to fix the flaw. We've identified a flaw, right, wrong, or indifferent. There is a flaw in the system. We must fix the flaw. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. All right. Gentlemen, we're going to end discussion here. Mr. Taylor, I didn't mean to leave you out. Would you like I, to add I, a discussion point? I, I just uh, uh, I, I understand 
both sides of the issue. I guess the concern, the real concern that I have is um, we have gone the method to try and make the citizens aware of the policy. Maybe they are not aware of the policy. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. The other thing is, though, we are also not talking about the added cost to the county that it would be to send each person who purchases a vehicle um, a notice, a special notice. Uh, someone has to do that. Some staff person has to do that. There are financial impacts that would uh, result in this. So it, it all depends on who's going to pay the bill. You know, I do feel for the person who doesn't know. But again, if we are to do what's being suggested, then we have to find the funds that's going to take uh, to physically, or how that's going to impact physically. Uh, it's, 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 it's a no-win situation unless you just know the policy and abide by the policy. Mr. Chairman, can I add one more comment? Can I comment to that, please? I think we're, we're still on the motion to reconsider. I know. If the motion to reconsider passes, there's probably going to be another motion. So I think we'll, we'll have more comment on that one. Let's, let's take the motion to reconsider uh, first. All those in favor of the motion to reconsider the board's action at our last meeting regarding the uh, personal property proration penalties. All those in favor of reconsidering it say aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. 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 Chair detects division of the House. Mr. Taylor, how do you vote? Nay. Mr. Black? Aye. Mr. Underwood? Nay. Mr. Akers? Nay. Mr. Seeley? Aye. And I vote nay. So the motion to reconsider fails four to two. Um, what we can do <coughs> is to, I'm sure the progress is going to have a big county ad soon, and we can put a note on the bottom that says proration. <coughs> and I'm sure there'll be a big story in the Freelance Star about proration, so as many people as possible can read that in the newspaper, and hopefully we can get it out again as, as, as it is. As Mr. Akers said, I think the the penalty is like $20 or $30. I would also like, Mr. Black, if you would like to pursue this more, I would like you to propose that the board um, modify its current ordinance to <coughs> include a maximum fine, if that was something the board wishes to do. Now, we'd have to do that through uh, uh, an ordinance, which we would have to have a public hearing, but there's a process. So at some point in time, maybe in closing board comments, like to do that, we can direct staff to do something like that to maybe maximize or cap the penalty so it's $20, $30, whatever the board feels is a good cap, or if the board feels they want to leave it alone, we'll go from there. All right, that takes care of the motion to reconsider. Uh, agenda item number four, um, which I had asked to be placed on here just as discussion only. I think we discussed that as part of our, our uh, public comments. So again, we are going to have a meeting one more time. Um, next Tuesday, which is the 16th, at Reedy Church Ruritan, 630, <coughs> which is the old Edmund Pendleton School. Uh, the folks from Carolina <coughs> Cycling are going to make a presentation to the community. Um, so that takes care of agenda item number four. And we will probably, as I said, we will vote on that probably sometime next year. And that is only the uh, solid waste amendment plan, which can be changed at any point in time. Yes, Mr. Underwood. Um, concerning the uh, meeting at the Rotan, I would like for us to consider pushing that meeting back about solid waste to give me an opportunity to meet, hold two or three meetings in Reedy Church as well before we even discuss that further. Vote on the text amendment? Yeah. Oh, sure. Sure. Okay. Sure. Um, I, that was just an es estimation. I, I know right, there's going to be right. quite a bit of work. I'm yeah. not sure if there will be other district meetings. I don't know if you talked about it at yours in November. I did not. Okay. So I'm sure there will be more district meetings, and, and we'll see and make sure we get more citizen input. All righty. Agenda item number five is going to be a discussion of the capital improvements program. And uh, Mr. Fincham has that agenda item. And as the board uh, may or may not be aware of, the, the Planning Commission right now has the Capital Improvements Program. They're going through it. It has not gone to Mr. Cully yet. Um, I'd ask Mr. Fincham if we could get this a little bit early 
just so we could see. It's my Christmas present to everybody. So we can see how much the uh, staff wants to spend uh, in terms of their, their identified needs. So Mr. Fincham. Mr. Chairman, you have in your packets a summary of the planning of the uh, departmental and agency requests for their capital improvements programs for the next five years. At this point in time, what we have done is gathered the CIP requests and put them in a spreadsheet form so that everybody, we basically have all the department's requests uh, on a fiscal year basis. This request will not, actually we don't even start discussing this with the Planning Commission until their January work session. So we spend the next month uh, fine-tuning these requests. Some requests which are shown in the CIP in reality do not meet the CIP thresholds for inclusion and will end up uh, being uh, as part in, in an O&M budget or something like that. So, so we're we're going through the process now of vetting all the requests that were submitted to us uh, to come up with a final draft CIP document. As part of that process, we will then meet with the county administrator and with individual departments and agencies uh, as needed to further clarify the request and to prepare a recommendation for the Planning Commission to consider um, prior to its public hearing and recommendation to the Board of Supervisors. I think what we all want to do this year is it's, it's actually been several years since <coughs> we had a full CIP uh, for consideration and for the Board to, to look at and, and evaluate. So I think the idea was to get ahead of the curve a little bit so that the board could see all of the requests out there um, as the departments uh, go through their budget uh, process with county administration and the CIP process with, with county administration and the planning commission. So that's really where we're at right now. This is a summary document of all the applications that have been received and they will be further vetted over the course of the next four to five weeks um, with the county administrator uh, prior to us taking this to the Planning Commission. Okay. And, and really my, my real purpose was as, as we start, January usually starts the budget process, uh, I wanted us to see what was out there. Uh, Major Mosier in pub public comments mentioned sheriff's cars. You'll see there's $1.5 million in the CIP for sheriff's cars, and that's spread over several years. But there, there are things like that. It's a, it's a five-year plan. I think there was um, six, $7 million for fire and rescue, $26 million um, for public works. And these are just round, round numbers. And I thought it was 20 some million dollars for schools. Oh, no. School board requests is, is like $7 million. That's, school, that's uh, school buses and things. Doesn't include any buildings. I guess we've got the buildings at least allocated. Not done, but at least allocated. Just to get us an idea, um, really no comments. It was just for the informational purposes. Comments. Do, you, do you have any comments? I was looking at a public safety building here. Fifteen million dollars. What is what is that about? I think that was the sheriff's request. What's the building, Mr. Uh, uh, Major Moser? What are you planning to build the fifteen million dollars for a public safety building? We didn't pay fifteen million dollars. Some of the schools were built. I understand. <laughs> Well, I, I'm not privy to those plans. I know that I, I, just, I just think it's sad. It is a uh, public safety building to include all public safety, I think. It's not just well, That's what office. it says here, public safety building. It yeah, doesn't I say think public it, safety building. I think it would be a joint effort between the fire 
and Rescue, Public Safety Building, and the Sheriff's Office, Public Safety Building. I'm not 100% positive. How do somebody that. go through these numbers, make sure they are? Well, well they are. And, and again, mistake is this is the first, we're, we're actually looking at the raw data. <laughs> Uh, a lot of times, a lot of times we just get the filter data, which is after Mr. Cully's looked at it. So this is just the raw data based on their request, just to get an idea of what people think they need. Mr. Akers, by the time need. that we can approve that, it may be 15 million in 20, 25, 30 years. So, you know, we just want to put it out there that that is something for modern law enforcement that we were looking for in the future, probably in the extended future. Okay, and it's, again, just to get an idea of where we are and what, uh, what we're going through. Mr. Chairman, could I ask a question? Mr. Taylor, you may ask a question. And this is a small amount, but I was looking at the school board request, and they have $30,000 for school board office renovation. Did they already? I thought they did that when they moved the, into the old bowling grant. Do you know about that? I believe your information is correct, Mr. Taylor, and I have not been uh, given any information as to where their funds came from when they made whatever renovations they did. Okay. I, I was just asking. I thought that had already been done. I, the reality is what you're saying is it was a savings or something. I, I, it was not identified in their budget, so I don't know where it came from. That's all I can say. Yeah. All right. Um, but it's, it's just the, the reason we got the CIP in this state was just so you could have a chance to see what it was before Mr. Culley, uh Mr. Chairman? Before Mr. Cully analyzes it more, I was going to put it right. If anybody would actually like the data request sheets to go with us, we'd be more than happy to provide that to, to the board members, the do, do documents that come to us. Do the data sheets have justification? In theory. <laughs> For a $15 million safety, public safety building? Um, all right, we'll leave it at that, Mr. Fincham. If, if there's anybody... If there is any board member who would like to have the uh, justification sheets that go along with the CIP request, I guess they should just ask Mr. Cully. And um, if you can make those electronic, I'll, I'll take them, but don't give me paper. Okay, so if you've got those, uh, Mr. Fincham, you can scan them in and send them to them in an email, then I'll take them. But I have to confess I'm a hoarder. So if I'm a hoarder, I can't hoard paper, but... Electrons, nobody really notices. Okay. Um, gentlemen, we are uh, at the end of our agenda. Mr. Culley is going to give us a capital projects update and then closing board comments. Mr. Culley. No closed meeting today? Oh, appears the reporters are disappointed. Let's figure one we could have. We'll have a closed meeting and then not tell you what happened. How's that? Joey was kind enough to inform me that that number came from a study that the county did in 2007 based on space needs assessment for fire and rescue. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> Just to let you know, that was for you, Ms. Agers. <laughs> Scott, and, and only because you do so much work for the community and you're right. such a great person and you got a gun. We're allowing you to come back and say that. Well, we, thank you, but I, you know, I want to keep you informed. We do, we do appreciate <laughs> yeah, it. And, yeah, no and <laughs> thank you, Major Mosier. All right, Mr. Cully, what's going on with our capital projects? Um, as you can see the, um, from the report in your packet, um, radio system worth uh, seventy-nine percent uh, expenditure. Um, Courthouse security upgrade, we still haven't gotten that complete. We would hope to write off of a contract with King William Schools, but we found that they'd only bought about, you know, six or eight of the items uh, yeah. similar, so we're going to pretty much have to bid that out or either look at maybe a public-private partnership type of uh, arrangement, see somebody to come in and propose it to see if we can get that done. Um, so we haven't started that project yet for $187,000. Um, the school project, see Bowling Green, is still at the same 91%. Madison is 4% expended. Um, and the high school renovations, a million twenty-seven nine oh seven, or four point nine percent expended. 
So uh, we have spent, a, uh, you know, 1.18, one point, uh, uh, one eight, uh, one point, you know, 8, uh, oh eight one point, uh, 100,080. One point one eight. Yeah, I'm trying to get the number out. Um, of that uh, 25 that we borrowed for the schools, um, the rest of those projects pretty much are um, complete down at the bottom. We have just a very little bit left uh, punchless items on the wastewater treatment plant, uh, obviously the water treatment wells, those type of things, uh, Caroline Pines water line, um, almost all those projects almost are done. Forget. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, most of those projects are done. We did overexpend on the wastewater uh, treatment, but you all approved some change orders, and as we proposed, we were going to pay for that out of the water line money that we saved. So while we may be over in one, we're way under than the other on those two projects. So we, we are still ahead for both of those projects as far as underspent. Um, board calendar, we went over this last week. Um, the most important thing is the 13th at 2 o'clock um, for the courthouse ceremony and the, and the Luther Morris portrait. And um, the, the second most important thing is the holiday luncheon on the 17th at 12 uh, to 2 and employee recognition around 1... 15. 15. Um, we read the memo. Uh, on the 19th, you may have gotten an invitation to Ladysmith uh, Advance Auto Ribbon Cutting Grand Opening. And they're going to be giving away prizes. I'm, I'm looking forward to some, some sort of car parts or something. So. Well, if they give you a car, make sure you file. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, and then as you'll notice, and I, I informed you last week, I'll be on vacation starting the 22nd through January 5th. Our next meeting will be the 13th. Um, and prior to that, we'll have the Dutch Treat Legislative Dinner at Lowry's that Essex hosts with the legislators, and you're supposed to let Pam know so we can get that coordinated. If you haven't, you still have a little bit of time on that. Um, that's all I have on the calendar. What else is January 7th? Something else is January 7th. I just, just looked at it. Mr. Taylor, do you have any closing board comments? Uh, no, I don't have any. Mr. Black? Mr. Chairman, as you had suggested earlier, I'd like the uh, staff to look at the uh, um, ordinance and bring it to the board regarding the fines on proration of personal property. Yeah, give, them, give them a little more direction as to like a maximum penalty. A maximum penalty. A maximum penalty of, I mean, I, I mean we can, can we discuss that in front of the board or do we need to say it now? Yeah, right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Mr. Underwood? Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to try to schedule two constituency meetings, uh, one on January 6th, uh, Ms. Hall, and then one on January the 20th. That's a week before our next board meeting and then a week before our second board meeting on Tuesday. And it's going to be directly related to the solid waste plan. Normal place, yeah. Read the um, Dawn Progressive Center and the Tourism Building. Second. And there's a radio meeting Thursday. That is correct. That's staff. Okay. Mr. Akers, closing board comments. Mr. Seeley, you had one. I have one closing board comment. Mr. Whiteman, can we find out if the D if DEQ has actually received a permit request from? the schools for stormwater management? Uh, they have received them. We have the transmittal letter. The high school was done on time. Uh, Madison had to be pulled. They had some changes, and we got the letter of transmittal Tuesday, last Tuesday of last week. So both of them are in. So both of them are in, and the 60-day clock has started. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's it, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you. Um, a couple of things. You mentioned January 7th. January 7th is the two-on-two, -two, I guess our last two-on-two -two, um, school board and board of supervisors. We'll be meeting there. Uh, the other thing is I know the town of Port Royal has been having uh, discussions about their water system and things, and, and we had talked before uh, when we were talking about boundary adjustment of combining the other systems and maybe the county looking at that. And I was just wondering if the board would allow staff to at least look at that to give them another option. 
because as is, their options are continue what they're doing and possibly not have enough money to make uh, changes or improvements, or sell their water system to Aqua. And I think giving them another option of maybe the county getting involved some sort of way, if we discuss it more on a staff level, might, might not be a bad idea if that's okay with the staff, uh, with the board. At least as discussion purposes for now. We don't, we don't know if that's what we'll do. All right, and last but not least, gentlemen, it has been truly my honor and a pleasure to be the chairman of this board of supervisors. Um, I hope the year has gone well, and I do appreciate your faith in me. And uh, we're going to take a motion to adjourn, because that's the last thing I want to do. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Oh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.